Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. It is Thursday, February 18th, 5.30 in the morning, Calgary, Alberta time, and I am happy to be here. Uh, we're on for 15 minutes. This is one child abuse survivor to another, and it's just a you know, 15-minute show, Monday through Friday, just to um, you know, share some resources that I find and just to be a support for people out there who, you know, are struggling and who feel like possibly they're the, you know, they're alone in this. And, and I just want to let everyone know that, you know, there's good help out there and just to keep reaching out. And uh, it's a daily walk. And, um, you know, for anybody who's ever experienced things in their life that are very painful and, you know, even not necessarily abuse, but just other things, you know, um, things in life can be, you know, life can throw some real curveballs at you. So, um, you know, even if you haven't experienced child abuse, you know, I'm, I'm here to encourage you to just keep going and keep moving forward. And, you know, um, we we all deserve to have a good life. And that's why, you know, I'm I, I'm so interested in, 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 in doing what I'm doing because, um, you know, it's our human right to, to be able to enjoy life. Uh, to to be able to have a good life and to um, actually to have life, period. So, um, you know, I study human rights and uh, child rights at at MRU part-time. Right now I'm in between courses, so I'm glad you could be here this morning. Um, We're going to be talking about uh, effects of child abuse on children, abuse in general. And this is a, it's an overview from a website that I, that I was on not too long ago, uh, www.com findcounseling.com and uh, you can they can forward slash and then journal forward slash child dash abuse uh, and it, it takes you to that article so it's a great article it's just an overview and um, what I, I we were talking yesterday finishing up with the article that we found uh, at www.childwelfare.gov and that was long term consequences of child abuse and neglect and so I thought well we'll just take another look at another overview on the effects of child abuse on children and then we can go from there and sort of branch out and really take a, a deeper look into this into the topic and the subject so you know it's not a professional show I don't have any professional certificates in counseling or therapy or anything like that I'm just uh, one person who who is uh, you know likes to share my resources that I find and uh, and just to be a support for for, for people out there and also uh, you know, child abuse prevention and awareness and education. Really, that's what this show is all about. So, if it makes you uncomfortable or the topics make you uncomfortable, you you have to turn it off. And um, you know, I, I completely understand. And it's not something you want to listen to if you're struggling with, uh, you know, self harming and you think it might cause you, it, it might trigger you. Right? This is the issue. It's very important to know. Uh, what you can listen to and what you can't. So you have to make that decision for yourself, and I hope you make the right decision and a good decision because it's literally up to you, uh, you know, and me what we listen to. So if it's something that's going to bother you, please don't listen to it. And also if you're a young person under the age of 18 and, and even younger, Make sure you have someone to listen to this show with just because it's so important. There's so many uh, crazy people in the world, and online security for, for children is just, oh, it's so important. It's, it's near and dear to my heart. And so, you know, if you're a young person and you're under the age of 18, it's better that you have someone check this show out with you. And <clears throat> not only just for that reason, but also because uh, if the que- if you have questions and stuff about, you know, the topic, it, because abuse is very, uh, it's a it's a sensitive subject, and a lot of times it's not talked about, and so you might hear something on here and then be uh, concerned about it, and you might not have someone to, to ask questions to, and it might bother you, so I think it's a good idea to have someone with you who, who has a good head on their shoulders, <clears throat> and they can sort of help answer some questions for you, and also just to explain things, because it's a, abuse is a, it's a hard topic, and you know a lot of people haven't heard too much about it, because people don't talk too much about it, so that's why it's so important to make sure you're in a safe place when you listen to this, and if you're under 18, have someone who's older and you know maybe has a mentor or a teacher or a parent. If you have a parent who cares about what you're listening to, which I hope you do, and um, you know that way, you, if if you have questions, you'll have someone to talk to. And we'll get right on with this article here: child abuse and overview effects of child abuse on children, abuse in general, and that's from www findcounseling.com and we have about 10 minutes so we'll just start reading right from the page I actually did cover this one before but it's a short article it's not all that long but it's really I thought it was good it just brings to light the effects of child abuse on children and um, so I'll start reading and you can follow me by just going to that website you can follow along there 
Uh, children suffering abuse develop a range of maladaptive, antisocial, and self-destructive behaviors and thoughts by trying to cope with the abuse. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just waking up so my voice is terrible. By trying to understand the situation and why the abuse is happening. Think of it like this. A person is robbed and beaten while walking down the street at night. In trying to deal with the situation, the person thinks, I shouldn't have walked down that street, or I shouldn't have been there at that time of night, or I should have walked with more confidence, or I shouldn't have made eye contact, or I should have given in quicker, or I should have fought back, or any number of other ideas they said here. The point is the person feels a sense of control over the situation if they can blame themselves or something they did for the attack. Instead of the world being a dangerous place where violence occurs at random, the world becomes a safe place within certain behavioral per perimeters. And they go on to say children experience the same kinds of thoughts when they suffer abuse, except they are much more immature and often make much less sense because the violence is occurring in their own family and nothing makes sense in that situation. And the abuse suffered by children occurs more frequently if the adult in the above example is attacked and uh, occurs more frequently. Okay, that's why. And the abuse suffered by children occurs much more frequently. That's what they're saying there. <clears throat> so it says, if the adult in the above example is attacked and mugged every week despite changing their behavior each time, it won't be long before that person starts coming up with bizarre explanations for the violence and becomes afraid to leave the house entirely. And that's so true. If you got mugged every week, you know, you wouldn't want to go outside, right? If the person has a chance to talk with the attacker after every attack, like, for instance, in the cartoons when they can do stuff like that, right? It uh, says the person will be sent through a psychological maze of smoke and mirrors, leading to any number of bizarre ideas about how to avoid the attack next week. By coming up with ideas about what they did to cause the abuse and what they can do differently to avoid the abuse, children also develop a range of maladaptive behaviors which can become uh, pathological problems. So they said, in addition to distorting children's thoughts, abuse also forces children into a position of having to hide the family secret. This prevents children from having real relationships and has lifelong effects. And because our ability to form healthy social relationships is learned, abused children are deprived of many skills necessary to navigate the social world and their entire concept of a, of a relationship is distorted. This leads to problematic relationships in life and even on the job. And I know, you know, like in my family, that was certainly the case. You know, my brothers were very uh, socially maladaptive. They, they didn't know how to uh, interact with people. And, you know, they became very, uh, oh, I don't know, they did a lot of drugs and they did a lot of violent crime. And, you know, they, <clears throat> they just did not develop socially. Um, at all, while others in our family, there were a few in our family that actually did. So it's very, it depends on the, uh, it depends on a lot of uh, factors, and there's a, a lot of reasons behind it, and uh, you know, you know, just how how often the abuse occurs, and what the abuse was, and and was it just directed to a few siblings and not 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 everyone, and that that can happen in families, especially especially in large families. So it's quite interesting that it does, uh, it can cause a lot of, um, you know, social. Uh, relationship problems, right? Just learning how to deal with people and how to how to behave around people and how to interact with people, right? Those those relationships are very uh they can be very hard for people who have grown up in an abusive home, right? It says another disturbing aspect of abuse is the exper experiential restraint it puts on children. If a child fears doing anything new because of the chance that it will lead to a violent attack or because an abusive parent keeps extremely uh, tight control over them, the child will lose his or her sense of curiosity and wonder at the world and will stop trying new things and exercising his or her mind. That child will never achieve his or her intellectual potential. Um, you know, if a child's being abused and they, um, they, they'll they stop looking at the world around them, right, and, and they'll stop... Um, you know, they're, they stop trying to do new things because, you know, if the if the parent has a tight control over them, they just they sort of shut down and then that then they never really achieve what they might have achieved, um, you know, without some help. And that's why I say, you know, you want to reach out and get some help if you suffered uh, child abuse in your home and and or of any kind, and you know, you're still dealing with the after effects and you're on your own. You know, you want to you want to get some help and not suffer in silence. It's so important. And another aspect of abuse which cannot be ignored is the physical stress it puts on a child. Multiple exposures to violence and trauma ca uh, cause what's known as autonomic and endocrine hyperarousal because it means the victim gets stressed out. 
when a person experiences this hyperarousal over and over again, there are permanent psych uh, physiological changes. And these changes can be seen as overreactions to stimuli, as in being easily startled, especially by things that remind the victim of the original event, uh, generally pe being emotionally numb, craving high-risk, stimulating or dangerous experiences or self-injury, difficulties in attention and concentration, cardiovascular problems and immune suppression, which leads to a higher risk for colds and more severe illnesses. <clears throat> so that's just so true because, you know, if, if a child's being abused, um, it puts a lot of physical stress just because of that stress on their body. And it's, it does have its effects on uh, on, a, on, a, on children, and even emotional abuse will, will cause um, a physical symptom and a physical reaction within the body because you're holding yourself um, very tense and, and uptight. And I think anybody who's suffered with like post-traumatic stress disorder would know um, that you know the body takes a toll. It's to it takes a toll on the body as well. So it's uh, it's very very hard on children. And it says there is a long list of outcomes for children experiencing abuse. They range from mild, almost unnoticeable personality effects to full-blown breakdowns in healthy functioning. And the point is that abuse increases a child's risk of developing a number of health and psychological problems. So it is just so huge. And uh, we know there's so many people dealing with uh, the effects of child abuse, you know, the, the adult survivors out there. Uh, academic difficulties, aggress aggressive behavior, these are effects of child abuse. Academic difficulties, aggressive behavior, alcohol and other drug abuse, anxiety, attention problems, bad dreams, bedwetting, behavior problems, chronic pain, compulsive sexual behaviors, concentration problems, dangerous behaviors such as speeding, uh, dehydration, depression, disassociated states, uh, eating disorders, failure to thrive, fear or shyness, fear of certain adults or places, and frequent injuries, insomnia, learning problems, lying, uh, mal malnutrition, um, oppositionality, panic attacks, physical symptoms such as headaches and stomach aches, repeated self-injury, risky sexual behaviors, uh, running away, self-neglect, separation anxiety, uh, sexual dysfunction, sleeping orders, social withdrawal, stealing, uh, stuttering, substance abuse, suicide attempts, uh, thumb sucking, or any age inappropriate behavior, and truancy. It says children have different levels of resiliency or hardiness and different personality attributes, so different uh, children respond differently to similar abusive situations. That's why the list of warning signs above seems so general. None of the symptoms above is diagnostic of child abuse. For example, the presence of any of the signs above does not prove that abuse has occurred. Also, a child may endure abuse without developing any of the symptoms above. So abuse simply increases the risk for all of the symptoms, right? It just makes it just that much more, um, you know, liable or, or, or more uh, reasonable that a, a child who experiences abuse would have some of those symptoms, one or two, or maybe none, right? It just depends on the on the abuse and on the child and on the whole situation, right? Uh, basically, children are supposed to learn everything they need to thrive in this world from their caretakers. And abusive parents provide the opposite of what children need. Instead of teaching and nurturing, they distort and destroy. And that's just a big, uh, that's so true. I mean, I just learned uh, really at a, at a young age, like, how to hate and uh um, how to how to hate myself, how to hate other people, um, because you know my parents did a really good job to teach me that, and so you know that stays with you because you always know that feeling, right? Uh, anger and uh, frustration, self harming and uh, drug abuse and just everything. It was just um, you know it has a huge effect on some children, on others not not so much, right? And this article is great. There's all kinds of links to uh, all of child abuse, uh, uh, child sexual abuse, physical and sexual abuse. So it's a great article and there's lots of stuff, uh, different resources you can get from there. So yeah, I'm so glad that you could be here today. Um, I'm the Canada Regional Director for Dream Catchers for Abused Children volunteer and I just love I'm so happy to stand with them and I just ask that you go to their website if you are looking for more information on child abuse uh, signs and symptoms and also how to how to report it how to prevent it just go to uh, dream Cat just type right into your browser uh, HTTP www.dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com That's a great website, great resources, and lots and lots of resources and uh, information there. And there's um, all kinds of great websites. I have um, so many resources. I don't have time to read them out. But if you need resources or get a hold of me, 
And I'll be back on tomorrow morning, 5.30, uh, same time, one child abuse survivor to another. And uh, if you need some information or you just need a hand or you just, if there's anything I can do, like just to be a shoulder even, please get a hold of me uh, on Blog Talk Radio or um, Facebook or wherever. And uh, my heart is with you all. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.